So recently I went to a party for Vanderbilt University to be like invited as a new member of the class of 2020. I was at this beautiful house. And this house had valet service. They had $250,000 in gardens, i.e. my college tuition. And they had like an incredible pool, incredible food, and these dainty little cucumber sandwiches. And as I was there eating those sandwiches, I hated them by the way, I had one feeling. I didn't belong here. I'm a staunchly middle class. I'm like as middle class as you come. Average income for middle class, 80,000. My parents make 81,000. And I felt that I didn't belong in this high class, rich place. And that got me thinking about privilege. And privilege is a pretty nebulous term. So it's used by politicians all the time, either to mean like, mean like you have too much money, you should be taxed more, or some sort of racial implication. But there's also a much more insidious type of privilege, and it's the type of privilege I've had. Like, my parents were able to take me to extracurricular activities. I was able to go to Taekwondo, I was able to debate. And I didn't have to worry about the police and stuff like that. So it's not really the privilege of very rich men or very powerful men. And there are many of those. <laughs> many, many rich and powerful men. But the thing is, is that beyond these rich and powerful men, this insidious type of privilege, the type that I would bet that most of us have experienced, where we get to talk 94% of the time, <laughs> that's something that's also very worrying. And me and my comrades at IMSA, over the past two or three years, developed various solutions for this as part of our work on IMSA Student Council. And this was to serve the anti-Trumps, in a way, the people who don't have that privilege, the people who are left behind by what the establishment or whatever you want to call it. And the technique was called listening and learning. So ostensibly it's a very simple technique. Go out and talk to people. But it's a very powerful technique. Imagine you could do one of those like Vulcan mind melds or whatever, I'm not a sci-fi fan, with your user group for a few seconds. And you could learn exactly what they wanted, how they wanted it delivered, all of it. That's what listening and learning lets you do. When you shut up for a few seconds, and listen to your user group and understand their concerns and understand what they want from you and also understood what led them to this point, when you have that empathy with them, well then you have the power to create a great civic app or develop something that they want and that they'll actually use. And listening and learning of course is one element in that, but something that we found useful, I thought I'd share it with you guys. Thanks. <laughs>